Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rick Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with 7NM Vega. That's right, AMD have confirmed that 7NM Vega is up and running in its laboratories and is currently conducting testing. Then we'll move over to another piece of AMD slash Intel news, and that is that the legendary architect, Jim Keller, has moved to Intel. That's right, his brief stint at Tesla is already over. Jim, of course, was responsible for AMD becoming very competitive with Intel with the Athlon architecture and more recent and perhaps more notably the Zen micro architecture. Then we're going to discuss AMD's financials because the company are being very bullish with their recent Q um, reports. So uh, first things first, we're going to start things out once again with 7NM Vega. So a small note before I begin, yes, I am formally back from the US, so of course this is my first time on camera since being back from the United States. I am still suffering from jet lag, hence the fact I look like I'm half dead, but hey, at least I'm back in front of the camera for you guys. Uh, thanks to everyone who has wished me a happy journey while I was in the States, and of course thanks for everyone who's stuck with us. And for new subscribers, if you want to click the subscribe button and, of course, the bell icon, that would be greatly appreciated. But without further ado, let's discuss Vega. So, Servant NM Vega, or perhaps better known to its friends and buddies as Vega 20, is, of course, a die-shrunk version of the current Vega architecture, but with a few notable key differences. Perhaps chief amongst those is that it's AMD's first attempt at really getting into the machine learning uh, market. There was a leaked slide which appeared last January which told us that Vega 20 was aiming to be released by the second half of 2018. So of course the fact that AMD have told us that it has reached their labs for evaluation tells us that perhaps this target is actually possible. It's also worth noting that in this particular slide the upcoming GPU is supposedly going to support PCIe Generation 4. Of course, it goes without saying that this has not been confirmed by AMD by any stretch of the imagination. In terms of other leaks and information, it appears that we're still looking at 64 compute units, which means 4096 shaders, although we are seeing a bump in HBM2 support, so it goes to four stacks of HBM2, which means one terabyte per second of memory bandwidth, as well as 32 gigabytes of RAM total. So essentially this means that we're looking at double the memory bus width, it's going from 2048 bit up to 4096. Another rumour is that it's designed to deliver eight times the double precision compute performance. Dr. Lisa Su, who is of course the president and CEO of AMD, also said that our foundry strategy is to use both TSMC and Global Foundries on the first 7NM product. We are using TSMC for that product and we have a strong relationship with them and so we do see a good momentum on it for what we see, and we're not concerned about capacity. She also added that I'm happy to report that our next generation 7NM Radeon Instinct product, optimized for machine learning workloads, is running in our labs, and we remain on track to provide samples to customer later this year. And if you need more evidence, you want to be Sherlock Holmes about this, also worthy of note is that earlier this month, so not too long ago at all, we saw a Linux patch, and this made reference specifically to Vega 20, and there were around 50 new Vega-specific hardware-level features. So, of course, at this point, along with the confirmation for AMD themselves, we are certainly looking at the distinct possibility that we will be seeing this GPU released within the time frame that AMD had predicted. There is still a lot of ambiguity when it comes to AMD's regular graphics cards for us as gamers. Of course, we've heard a lot of rumours of perhaps a follow-up architecture for Vega, which is going to slot in between Vega and Navi. But there's also a distinct possibility, although I would certainly put this into the rumour mill at best category, that AMD are also somewhat considering a 7NM Vega, perhaps for an interim graphics card. The problem is... If they were to release the GPU and it was really good for even half precision, it could actually cannibalize some of the market share for the machine learning uh, 7NM Vega, Vega 20, because half precision uh, FP16 is still very, 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 very desired for certain customers in the compute oriented sector. Ultimately, when it comes to us gamers anyway, things are still very much up in the air. 
And now on to Jim Keller. Jim Keller has been extremely important for AMD's history. The K7 and K8 architectures are undeniably perhaps some of the most impressive times in AMD's CPU run against Intel. Back in the early 2000s up to about 2005, it's fair to say that AMD were actually perhaps even a better choice than Intel for virtually any workloads. The K7s, which were the original Athlons, were just incredible and were probably a better buy in most instances than the Pentium 3s or even the Pentium 4s, especially given Pentium 4s, ironically given today's situation with their netburst architecture, typically would lose out against uh, AMD when it came to gaming, although the hyper-threading did help an awful lot when it comes to, of course, multi-threaded applications, which back then were not as prolific as today, of course. Fast forward a couple of years and we had the Athlon 64s, which of course were the first 64-bit CPUs available for the average user, and eventually, of course, they started to morph into the X2s, which were essentially dual CPUs on the same kind of die. And then he eventually left for Apple, and then went back to AMD after a short, um, you know, kind of holiday, if you will, away from the company, worked on the Zen micro architecture. And that was pretty much all we heard from Jim up until his departure for, of course, Tesla. Now, it's fair to say that when Jim left for Tesla, you almost were kind of thinking, well, what's he doing? He must be working on this big, you know, grandiose project. And we would probably be hearing from him in like 2019, perhaps 2020, which is typically how long, of course, a new architecture takes to plan out and then tape out and then design and then, you know, actually see the results. Not so much. He seems to have departed from the company. In fact, by seems to, he has, and now is working for Intel, which is a very curious decision. Now, it's fair to say that Intel, and this is getting slightly off the topic and perhaps my own personal opinion, so take it with as many grains of salt as you desire, Intel have been very competitive in the CPU arena for a number of years now, but if you look at pure innovation, they haven't really pushed the envelope perhaps as much as they could have. And it's fair to say, at least in my opinion, that AMD have really stuck it to them with a hot poker with the Zen architecture. I'm not saying that Intel are bad by any stretch of the imagination, at least in single core IPC, they are still ahead of AMD and arguably in a lot of tasks, which is the better choice for processors, particularly when it comes to gaming, is very much down to your personal preference. It is, however, worth noting that the 2600, for example, the price point it is, is, well, a very good choice for the average user. But Jim, of course, also joins Raja Kodori. Raja, of course, was heading up AMD's graphics division, so now you have the chief architect responsible for the Zen micro architecture at Intel, and you also have Raja Khadori. Now, Raja, it's kind of down to your discretion whether you blame Raja for Vega, because many would say that Vega was not living up to the expectations, but, at least in my opinion, Raja was not really the sole person responsible for this. I mean, if you really think about it, Raja, A, had a limited budget to work with, and B, a lot of the decisions made with Vega were not necessarily Raja's to begin with. In fact, it's perhaps more fair to say that Raja was essentially taking over the responsibilities and what he was left with before. While there are certainly issues that you could raise with AMD's Zen processors, the very fact of the matter is that AMD are operating on a research budget which is considerably smaller than what Intel have to offer. And it's worth noting that Jim is probably not just worried about creating a CPU which is necessarily for us gamers or HEDTs or perhaps even servers. It's also likely that they're targeting ultra mobile markets and of course ARM has essentially dominated that and run away with the market by their lonesome. Sure of course they have had Atom but most likely Jim can help them redesign or perhaps design from fresh an entire chip which would be specifically for this particular market, which of course would be incredibly lucrative for Intel. And from my own perspective as well, and this is certainly not a news piece, as in like I'm not saying this from a quote from Intel, but one can argue that with Raja and Jim now being part of uh, Intel's, I guess, A-team, it almost appears like Intel are trying to change the culture within its company and disrupt the status quo that Intel have had for several years now. 
from Intel's point of view, at least internally, and I'll never of course admit this publicly, but they must be somewhat frustrated with what's happened. They had this lead over AMD, which many would have argued would be pretty much insurmountable, and then suddenly AMD comes along, ironically using, of course, Jim Keller as the chief architect, now that he's uh, buggered off and gone to Intel, and has created this Zen architecture, which has essentially put them back on the roadmap. And it's not just from the perspective of performance either. The fact of the matter is, it's making them almost like heroes to many. Almost like the underdogs who were giving Intel a rabbit punch. And a lot of folks are frustrated with Intel, not necessarily because they feel Intel are putting out bad products, but because they feel that Intel have kept the pace back of technology more than what perhaps Intel could have. They have kept pushing the core architecture. Who knows how much further they could have moved on. I know I keep telling you this every single video but seriously four cores eight threads was the modus operandi of intel for so long for a lot of folks it was just frustrating and i'm not going to tell you that if you bought a 2600k and then you bought say a 7700k you wouldn't have seen some performance increase of course you would have ipc would have definitely increased clock speeds would have definitely increased but given the number of years between the two platforms release I think many perhaps expected more. And lastly on this subject, I'll also mention that Intel have not had a smooth time of it when it comes to 10NM. And they are actually behind their originally projected roadmaps in this area. Within the last 24 hours, AMD have also announced their first quarter 2018 earnings, and they are very impressive. I'm going to read this out verbatim because I don't want to get the numbers wrong, but the numbers are up 40% up to 1.65 billion. Now, to put that into some level of context, in the, the fourth quarter of 2017, they made 1.34 billion, and now they're up to, as I, guess, as I just mentioned, 1.65 billion, rounding it up rather nicely. So the earnings up per share at to 8 cents. This is compared to, once again, the previous quarter, which was a negative 0.2 cents. Now, there are multiple reasons, of course, AMD are up, and we're going to go through, and go through a couple right now. To me, however, the most startling result regarding the Q1 2018 report is if you pit it against Q1 2017. Revenue, once again, 1647 million compared to 1178 million of 2017, but the operating income rose from 100, excuse me, rose from 11 million in 2017 up to 120 million. And net income in 2017, first quarter, was a net loss of 33 million US dollars, and now AMD are raking in 81 million US dollars. Of course, it doesn't require me to tell you why AMD have been more profitable of late, and it's not just one reason. The Ryzen CPUs, and this goes across the entire gamut, this includes, of course, Epic, this includes the Threadripper, this includes the original Ryzen 1000 series, obviously we've not seen the results yet of the 2000 series, but I can assure you they're going to be pretty damn profitable. Then we've got the various APUs that AMD have also launched, and of course console sales are still doing pretty well also. But then you've got GPUs. Now I will admit that the mining fiasco, and I do call it a fiasco in a loving way, but the mining fiasco is probably running its course, particularly with Ethereum, as we've discussed many times now, with Bitmain releasing its ASIC, supposedly in the next several months, how uh, the company are going to be able to keep up with demand is unknown yet, but we'll have to just wait and see. Regardless, we are also seeing a lot of potential for AMD's GPUs in the future. Like we just discussed Vega, uh, 20, also known as Vega 7NM, and how important it will be most likely for AMD when it comes to machine learning. Of course, what the price is and how well it compares against NVIDIA remains to be seen, so we'll have to wait and see whether everything's rosy and dandy there. But even so, the fact of the matter is, you're looking at a company which didn't really have anything for machine learning, and now suddenly you're releasing a product which specifically is designed around that. AMD have certainly not had a smooth ride of it over the last year. I mean, sure, Intel definitely got hit really hard with Meltdown and Spectre, but then, of course, we saw the whole rise and fall thing, which definitely was, let's say, somewhat suspicious, even though eventually it turned out, of course, to be nothing, and AMD were able to release a patch for it, and blah, 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 and essentially we see no performance degradation with those patches, but even so, it definitely did hit their share prices. 
But fortunately, with these n pieces of news that AMD are doing fairly well in this quarter, AMD share prices are starting to go up again. So for now anyway, things are fairly rosy in Camp Red. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'm going to be on camera more over the next several weeks, which I think many of you guys like because it kind of breaks up the video. And quite frankly, I kind of enjoy it. Uh, there is going to be a lot of reviews popping up over the next few days. I've actually working negotiating with a Ryzen 2000 review and some other bits and pieces I can't quite talk about yet. So it's going to be pretty awesome. There's going to also be some fun stuff on the channel I've been meaning to do for some time. Um, and that's pretty much it. So the normal stuff, like, share, comment, subscribe, just to let YouTube know that you kind of, well, you know, do like the content. Um, and of course, I'm obliged once again to, um, you know, nudge you in the direction of the bell icon, because that is apparently is perhaps more important than water at this point if you're a YouTuber. But anyway, um, normal stuff. Take care of yourselves and uh, bye for now.